The ancient art of wood carving has strong traditions in Britain. Not only were they created by the medieval craftsmen who decorated our churches, but by master sculptors like the great 17th century artist Grinling Gibbons. He brought an extraordinary realism to his interpretation of the natural world that had never been seen before. I met Hampshire artist Alex Jones, who has continued the tradition with a contemporary flourish. He likes to bring his audience close to the kind of nature some of us are usually at pains to avoid. You know, I am a bit of an arachnophobe, especially big hairy ones. <laughs> I love the enormity of scale. Why so big? Uh, because basically, uh, I think we need beasts around us and things like that. Yeah. And the way to change someone's perception of something is to make it big and exciting. And uh, yeah, it just changes, changes the way you look at stuff. And, and also, we're used to seeing like squirrels and rabbits and things like that. Yes. That are sort of easily palatable. I want to make something that's a bit more edgy. And because wood's so beautiful, I came up with the idea that what happens if you carve something that people thought of as really re revolting and horrible, yeah. but had the beauty of the traditional woods and things like that. So you start um, to fall in love with it. Exactly. So you end up with a paradox. You end up mm. with a push and a pull. You get mm. pushed away by the subject matter, and then you get pulled in by the material and things like that. Yeah. And that's, way, that's the energy that interests me. Yes. And what woods have you used there? Basically, well, what we've got here is some good old English oak. All yeah. the lighter bits are made in oak. Yeah. And then inlaid is black wood walnut oh, or, nice. or American walnut. Yeah. It's one of the things that pulls people in. If, if you use mm. natural woods and their colours, then people yes. come in closer. As soon as they hear it's paint or stain, you're or sort dye. of distancing people, aren't you? So yeah. I'll always try and use natural woods. Yeah. And then for the final touch, the eyes are done in ebony, and they're from the keys <laughs> you get on... I, I collect from pianos and stuff right. like that. So, uh, yeah. Very resourceful. You also yeah. have to show it as people see the real spider, which is when it's in your bath or on the wall, you see it from above. Sure. And that's the shot, that's the bit that really freaks people out when they see it like that and it's just suddenly bigger. Yes, a lot bigger, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to come across the blighter that big, though, no, would you? No, definitely not. And it's not just creepy crawlies he carves, but plant life like this dandelion. That's lime, isn't it? I recognise that's right, that yes, as lime. That's lime. The dandelion is all about weeds and things, and because uh, the, the client who commissioned it used to love his garden, and I love the idea of taking some of the weeds that he spent his whole time pulling up sure, and yeah. making it seven foot one that he, he couldn't. So, so making it into something exotic and exciting. And with this guy here, yeah. um, I actually had a house spider. Right. I had him as a pet for a couple of months and he was called Stanley. And uh, when, literally when I did the last bit of carving, he One died. One of those big harvest yes. spiders. Oh yeah, absolutely, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And yeah. uh, so I almost feel part of him maybe still inhabits the sculpture. Alex's method is to observe nature in the wild, but he has been known to wrangle the odd creature, which can lead to unsettling situations at home. And I have carved a scorpion. I uh, actually uh, got hold of uh, an imperial scorpion for a few years, which was uh, actually one of the most boring pets. Uh, but the one thing it did do was frighten the babysitter by <laughs> clanking around the cage every night, so, uh, so that was worth it. <laughs> Alex's work is usually commissioned and can range in price from £1,000 upwards, but they do take months of effort to complete. His workshop is in his home, which is crawling with the creatures and plants he has recreated in wood, along with a few real ones. But it's at the back of the house where they emerge from the raw materials, including his latest commission. Butterfly wings. Yes, yes, this, this is one, one of the wings of uh, a very, very large butterfly uh, that was commissioned uh, by Lords Hill Academy in Southampton to be made with the children. Um, and they wanted something that symbolised peace and regrowth and, and also the whole symbolisation of, uh, of butterflies as, yeah. as ideas growing. Like sure. Uh, the actual structure, so it's a little bit so like the making... skeletal structure of the wing yes. is oak. Yes, uh, it's like making oak. a spitfire. So these bend the wing, because obviously yeah. the last thing you want is just a flat wing. Yeah. Uh, and that's bending some very uh, thin ply. And then on the ply, a little bit like making a roof, yeah. is different uh, veneers, scales oh, of veneers. Yes, yes. And of course, the uh, butterflies are based on re real butterflies. Uh, and I've been looking very closely at uh, dead and living ones, because uh, I want the details to really ring true. And I've been told there's some finishing touches to do, which hopefully absolutely, you absolutely. might let me have a little yes. go. I need an expert carver like yourself. Oh, no, no, no. To <laughs> come and work on the antenna. We're carving the antennae, so uh, uh, should we go through to the studio? Yeah, come on. 
This butterfly has been crystallising for two years, with incredible care and attention from Alex. So I can't afford to get this wrong. Well, there's the body of the butterfly. It's growing, it's getting bigger. One last remaining wing there and one of the antennae. Now, this is the bit I'm going to be working on. Absolutely. OK, cool. so, so cool. come on, talk me through it. So, That's first of all, you've got the lines here, obviously you've got the segmented antenna. And what we need to do is make a stopping point in to the wood. So whenever we carve into it... It's going to stop on that Exactly, point, it? and it's not going to run away. So, so basically, uh, and then we take the, uh, the next chisel... Air down with air the Air down. Uh, do you want to have a go? Do you trust me? I do, implicitly, <laughs> shouldn't I? There's a lot of work that's gone into this so far, isn't there? <laughs> but it did, maybe it'll just end up with a short antenna, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yes, go for Here it. Here goes. That's good, that's really good. I don't hit as hard as you because I'm not so confident. That's it. <laughs> and then what I should so I should stop now, okay, Matt, clean up. and then go for the go for the V and take that round. And I think you've got you're getting there with the depth actually there on that one. That's perfect. That's really good. Good sharp tools. I'm glad you think so. Yes, yes. I think you, without so, a sharp tool, it makes it a so lot harder. Yeah, yes, go for it. Yes, yes. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I, I, I could be out in the studio all night long doing this. Well, I'll come back later, if that's all right. I'll go and have my tea and, and come back. I think it might go horribly well. <laughs> but I've thoroughly enjoyed being a little part of this antenna. Fantastic. What an inspiring man who's definitely passed on the bug. Just take a look at the finished version of this elegant butterfly, assisted by yours truly.